Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Anna Baker's wedding dress. In 1836, a man named Elias Baker purchased a mansion in Altoona, Pennsylvania and moved his small family in. Elias's oldest daughter was named Anna, and when she fell in love with a steel worker, things took a dark turn. Anna's father didn't want her dating this man, but she kept doing it in secret. The story goes that Anna and the man planned a secret wedding and were going to elope. Unfortunately, Elias found out and freaked out. He apparently purchased the steel mill that the man worked for and then forced him to have to move to an entirely different city so as to prevent him from being able to continue seeing Anna. Anna of course was furious with her father and I'm sure this was only made worse by his decision to offer other men to her, to which she of course declined because that's just weird. Anna instead locked herself in a room with her wedding dress that she never got to wear. Anna unfortunately never married after that and spent the rest of her life being terribly upset about the whole incident. After her death, it is said that her anger and despair ended up going into the wedding dress. Members of the Baker family reported seeing the dress in different places around the house, despite no one moving it themselves. Some have even reported seeing Anna's spirit dressed in the gown around the house as well. In our number nine spot, we we have a zombie mug. Merch like this makes me terrified but also excited. This mug is super creepy though and most definitely cursed. This is a mug that when heated, a zombie appears in the cup with blood on its hands. The zombie's face is quite chilling that it actually feels like there's some kind of spirit attached to it. Anyone else? The zombie is also like pretty bloody too, no thanks. Definitely stay away from this product unless you like dealing with dark spirits then by all means go for it. In our number eight spot, we have the faceless carving. This is an item of a mother and daughter hugging that's a carving made of willow tree. The only thing is the mother and daughter do not have faces. Look, I love my mom. She's one of my best friends. And I love cheesy lovey-dovey products to show that you love someone. But this isn't the one. <laughs> I don't know, man. Seeing this, I got the instant creeps and I personally think this item might be haunted. There's so much detail in the figurine. Why leave the faces blank? From what I've gathered, there are a lot of items similar to this made from a brand called Willow Tree, and honestly, I think their intention seems to be to make some sort of comforting merch. At least that's what they say in their marketing. But personally, there's something spooky about these figurines without faces. Faceless items just feel too horror movie for me. Quite possibly haunted and therefore cursed. In our number seven spot, we have the creepy pen holder. Okay, so this item is just creepy. It's a pen holder with a little red man figurine lying on the floor, and the hole where you put your pen in is right in its heart. Who the heck thought of this? What was their thought process? Who were they imagining this guy to be? And why don't they have better friends to say, hey man, maybe don't make such a low vibe product. The world is low vibe enough these days. This item is not cursed in your typical ghostly way, but it definitely is just low vibes to begin with, so anyone who buys it is sure to continue the low vibe train and sit in a bit of a crappy headspace. In our number six spot, we have the LED mask. Look, I'm conflicted. On one hand, this is kinda cool to look at at first, if you're into LEDs. On the other, it's very creepy, and also it can't be good to wear LEDs so close to your face, can it? I don't know. I don't know much about electricity and lights, but something makes me nervous about wearing lights on my face, and I'm concerned that no one even asked the seller about that. The mask itself is also the face of something out of a nightmare, so there's also that. I could see a John Wayne Gacy of this time using this mask while plotting his next kill, and that just gives me the shivers, not gonna lie. With its creepiness and the fact that it's probably not very safe to wear LEDs on your face, at least for long, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this product may curse you with some kind of low vibe situation in your future if bought. In our number five spot, we have a kitty salt and pepper holder. Look, I'm a cat and dog person. I love them both. I sway a little more on the dog side, but whatever, they tend to give you more love. Anyways, my point is that I love all cat and dog merch, but this, this is terrifying. This is a cat salt and pepper shaker that could have been made cute and adorable, but it looks like it it 
may possess you. First off, the cat is dark gray with shades of black. Could they have not made him white or orange or give him a cute yellow collar? Anyways, it's really the face that's terrifying. Couldn't they have modeled the face off of the cat from Shrek? It's so cute with the big eyes. No, they made the cat look like it will probably eat you while you're sleeping. In our number four spot, we have the toilet mug. I'm throwing this one on the list because it's clearly cursed to make you want to throw up every time you have your morning cup of tea. This is a toilet tea mug. I can't, just why? If you are someone watching this and you have bought this item, please, please explain in the comment section below. It's just so beyond gross. It's definitely a funny gift, but also a waste because it's so gross that I just can't imagine anyone drinking from it and not feeling like they must now run to the real toilet. <laughs> Anyways, if anything, I want to argue that it's cursed with not being used much and definitely will make people feel ill. In our number three spot, we have the Let's Summon Demons shirt. Let's not. <laughs> Maybe let's go outside and play in the grass under the sun or make chalk drawings on the pavement or beat Pokemon Gold again like it's 2002 and do everything but summon demons, okay? <laughs> Why is there a shirt that is encouraging people to summon demons? Clearly the creator that made it was being possessed by demons himself or herself and the demons gathered together to plan how they can possess more people and alas came upon the plan of encouraging people to summon them through a t-shirt with cute humans holding hands while standing on a giant pentagram. In our number two spot we have a satanic ring. Whether you're religious or not, I'm sure you can look at this product and feel uneasy. It's a gold-plated stainless steel ring that has a devil skeleton with a cross on its forehead. It's extremely dark. Anything to do with the devil just makes me uneasy, but honestly, there's nothing about this product that feels positive. Even as a Halloween ring, I feel like it's just too much. The vibe around it is quite low, and I'm pretty convinced that anyone that buys it will be doomed to feeling low while wearing it. Could be just me, but I believe that we should be careful with what we put on us as objects carry energy, and even if you got someone to cleanse an object, something like this, you'll always know that its maker had low vibe intention when creating it, so therefore, it could always possibly be low vibes. In our number one spot, we have the Furby doll. Guys, stay away from this doll. I had to put this in first because I had so many creepy situations that happened with this doll that I'm convinced it's possessed. Also, it's not just me. Literally, this was trending a few years ago where people told their possessed Furby doll experiences and I instantly felt more creeped out as that totally confirmed my own experiences. Literally, I would be talking to my mom and the doll would say something that would be in response to what we were talking about. Or it would just, you know, make noise or blink when the battery wasn't in it. I'm telling ya, this item is not to be played with. If you have a haunted Furby story, oh my gosh, please share in the comment section below. We want to hear it. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the statue. This statue or bust is said to have been made by a man named William who enjoyed making these sorts of things out of clay. Unfortunately, however, legend goes that this specific statue was made on the same day that William was crushed to death during a tragic work accident. A co-worker of his who showed up to work the following day found that this statue was still there, so he took it home with him. For a while, he kept the statue hidden, but when he took it out to display it, things started to go awry. It started started with just a heavy and uninviting feeling, but soon things escalated. He began to hear doors slamming on their own, only to go and find them wide open. If anything was placed next to the statue, the next time he would find it completely shattered, and at one point he found the statue in a position that he never placed it in. He finally had the last straw when he saw a dark, shadowy figure, or a sort of mist, moving around near where he placed the statue. After this, he was so spooked he had a friend list the item for him on eBay because he just simply needed to get rid of it. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Golden Eagle. This car was a 1964 Dodge 330 limited edition, and it has been blamed for the death of around 14 people, which, like, how do we even let it get that out of control? 
It is said that the car started out as a police car originally, but there were three officers assigned to this car who all ended up taking their lives and other people's lives in horrible ways. Not in the car, but still super weird that this all seemed to happen after they had been using the cars for work. Because of this strange correlation, it ended up being sold off to another man. Throughout the 80s and 90s, it is said that because of the rumored cursed car, it became a point of interest for vandals. People began vandalizing the car only to meet their own untimely fates, which were all met in strange ways. For example, it was said that one vandal died from being struck by lightning. It is said that the curse is so strong that one person decided to merely touch the car and it sent him into madness as he went on to commit atrocious crimes after that that I cannot even detail here on YouTube. The car now belongs to Wendy Allen who supposedly collects and decorates haunted cars for a living, so it seems as though it's finally found its home. Far, far, far away from anyone else. In our number 8 spot today we have the Blarney Stone. For hundreds of years, the Blarney Stone has resided within Blarney Castle which is near Cork, Ireland. The stone is a piece of limestone and legend says that those who give the stone a smooch will then be given the gift of the gab. This little smooch can bestow the power of being able to talk your way out of any situation which would be incredibly useful, but there are those who always try to indulge in too much of a good thing. The issues start when you attempt to take a piece of the stone, no matter how small, away from a its home. Those who don't follow the rules and take the stone end up being cursed with bad luck. Every year the castle receives parcels from greedy tourists who tried their luck at stealing portions of the stone. These parcels are returned with the intention of lifting the curse of misfortune. It is said that once the stone is returned, the curse will be lifted, which is most definitely good news. So I guess the moral of this curse, however, is to not be greedy and to just follow the rules. In our number 7 spot today we have the Terracotta Army. The Terracotta Army was discovered in China and it is a massive piece of funerary art that is thought to be one of the most massive archaeological finds of modern times. It truly is incredible and it's something that's been attracting tourists from all over the world since its discovery, but for those who did the discovering, well, things haven't been going so well. In 1974, there were seven farmers who happened to stumble upon this huge discovery, and you would think that this would come with some kind of a reward, but instead, things have been going terribly for them. Soon after the discovery, the government claimed their farmland. After this, their homes were demolished in order to make way for the exhibition halls and gift shops that were to come. They didn't just get nothing for the discovery, they ended up losing because of it. This is exactly why many people believe that perhaps with the unearthing of this huge piece of art, they also dug up some sort of curse that was buried long ago. In our number 6 spot today we have the Myrtle's Plantation Mirror. Myrtle's Plantation is located in St. Francisville, Louisiana and it is said to be one of the most haunted places in the entire world, which seems like that would make a lot of sense. One of the reasons for this spooky reputation is because of a mirror that resides inside of it. It is said that this mirror holds the spirit of Sarah Woodruff and two of her children. Legend goes that a woman named Chloe was a slave at the plantation, and she drew up a sort of plan to get revenge on the owners of it, Sarah and her husband. Chloe baked a cake full of poison for them, but in the end, the rest of the family, except for the husband, ended up consuming the poisonous cake. When they passed away, it is said that their spirits went into the only mirror that was uncovered at the time, thus this haunted mirror was born. People who have since visited the plantation have claimed to see the family in the reflection, as well as handprints on the glass, despite the continuous polishing. In our number 5 spot today we have tap shoes. These tap shoes were listed on eBay and they are cute as can be. They're black shiny ones with a red bow to tie them together. They look recital ready, but apparently they haven't been used in a long time and the reason behind it all is chilling. Legend goes that these shoes once belonged to a little girl who loved to dance. At some point the shoes were retired and she would go on to meet an untimely fate. The shoes ended up being placed with other old the shoes ended up being placed with other old memento items and put in a closet and sort of forgotten about. The shoes, as well as the other items with it, ended up being part of an estate sale years later, but the spirit of the person who passed may have already had some other ideas about what they wanted to happen to the shoes. The seller of the shoes reported that there were mysterious happenings surrounding the shoes as they were clearing out their late aunt's house, the person who was the owner of the shoes. They explained that there were mysterious knocking sounds coming 
coming from inside of the closet, almost as if the shoes were tapping by themselves. Also, as it turns out, the house had quite a gruesome history that included killings, so if not the aunt's ghost, perhaps there's another one lurking somewhere in there. In our number 4 spot today we have the dark mirror. This mirror now resides with the traveling museum of the paranormal and the occult, but prior to that, this mirror was received from the owner who had purchased it from a psychic fair. It is believed that this mirror was created sometime around the 1820s or 30s, and it is actually quite beautiful to look at, despite the sinister things it seems to hold. The owner who gave it to the museum explained that every time they peered into the mirror, they saw these extremely upsetting things while looking into the dark mirror's reflection. The museum has said that since they added the mirror to their collection, there have been guests who have also reported the same kind of things. Guests have claimed to see things reflected back at them like sightings of their own corpse. In our number 3 spot today we have the water jug. Ok, estate sales are weird places. There are weird things there, some quirky items, but this has got to be one of the strangest on a whole bunch of different levels. It's a decorative drinking jug, but it's being held in a miniature cart that's being pulled by a porcelain donkey. I truly could not make that item up, nor could I make up the fact that this kitschy item is also apparently haunted. The seller of this item spoke about how he grew up with the item around as it was always displayed at his grandmother's house and that she always kept it full of water. This was all fine and dandy until after she passed away and he was taking care of the estate and he bumped into it. How was this jug filled with water when no one was there to fill it? He thought that perhaps it was just old leftover water and he just ignored it, but the same thing seemed to happen repeatedly. And it wasn't even like the water level was staying the same. It would increase, seemingly all on its own. The seller decided that this was not an item that they wanted to hold on to and decided it would be best to pass on to someone who was ready to take on this mysterious, strange object. In our number 2 spot today we have Letta the doll. Before we really dive into this one, can we just acknowledge how all cursed dolls look like they would be a cursed doll? I mean like Annabelle, Robert, they both totally look like dolls that would be holding a secret scary curse. And this doll, Letta, is just another one that we can add to that list. Letta is a doll that is said to be around 200 years old and is extremely cursed. This doll is called Letta for short as its full name is Letta Me Out. Really clever. The doll was originally found underneath a house which definitely feels like the origin story of a haunted doll. The creepy discovery came 47 years ago. Letta still lives with the man who found him. The hauntings of Letta include things like the doll walking around on its own at night, the owners finding objects around the house that have been moved into odd places, some people have even seen Letta move right in front of their own eyes, and the owner also reports finding little doll sized scuff marks around the home as well. It is said that this doll once belonged to someone who passed away while holding it, thus their spirit became trapped inside of the doll. Apparently one day in an interview about Letta, as the interviewer was asking questions about the person who passed, the doll began to move in her lap. Yeah, no thank you. Letta has his own Instagram and Facebook page in case you want to hear more about all of the creepiness surrounding this cursed doll. In our number one spot today we have the mask. This metal mask resembles the face of a monkey. It's definitely already a little strange looking, but the story is even more interesting. According to the seller of this item, they explained that they acquired this mask in Thailand, but not before they experienced a supernatural battle where a witch used spells to bind the spirit of a jinn to the mask trapping it in. Since then, the mask is said to be full of supernatural powers, some of which could bring benefits, but it takes a whole pile of work. This mask is said to have the ability to fend off vampires as well as potentially bring riches to its owner, but it needs some things in return. The entity in the mask needs regular offerings of food and drink, and it also requires the owner to meditate in front of it for 20 minutes, 3 times a day. Talk about high maintenance. If a person refuses to do these things while in possession of the mask, it is said that a cruel fate awaits them. I mean, what do you expect when you anger an ancient spirit? In our number 10 spot, we have the Donald Trump mask. It's probably cursed because along with how funny it is, it's also terrifying. Imagine seeing someone wear this walk by you. If they had, you know, a similar build to him and they wore like a turtleneck, then I would probs think it was him. The extremely orange 
orange face with the white eyes is too much. Too funny and terrifying at the same time. In our number nine spot today, we have Aluru Rock. Aluru Rock is a large sandstone formation that is located in the southern part of the Northern Territory in Australia. It is sometimes known as Ayers Rock, but regardless of what it is called, this area is sacred for the people indigenous to the land. This is part of the reason that those who visit the rock are asked to not take anything from the site. Despite this, people of course still choose to smuggle pieces of the rock out of the area and home with them. Other than the bad karma and just in general feeling like a bad person for doing the one thing you're asked not to do, as it turns out, this rock may hold a more sinister secret. Those who have stolen rocks from the Uluru have experienced things like extremely bad luck, severe illness, and sometimes even the death of those they love. The curse these rocks hold is seemingly so bad that it is very common for the company that runs the tours of the formation to receive letters of apology that contain the stolen rocks. Apparently these letters come so often at least one a day is expected. Maybe this is a weird coincidence, but it seems to be happening a little too often for that to be the explanation. In our number 8 spot today we have the beds. Back in 1986, couple Deborah and Alan Tolman moved into a new home with their children in Wisconsin. The following year they bought a second hand set of bunk beds for their kids for a hundred bucks, but as it would turn out, they bought much more than they had originally bargained for. When they brought the bunk beds into their home, they clearly must have brought something else along with it. It started when they began to see strange shapes in their home, and they would hear disembodied voices that, despite how hard they tried, they could not find the source of. They found themselves fighting with clocks and radios that turned on by themselves, they would find furniture that had moved seemingly all by itself, and sometimes they'd even see an apparition of an old woman. In the end, they not only threw the beds in the landfill, but they also moved from the home just to be safe. As far as we know, the beds remained in the landfill, but who's to say for sure? In our number 7 spot today, we have the Crying Children paintings. These paintings were a series created by an Italian painter who was known as Giovanni Breglin, but his name was really Bruno Amarillo. Bruno was born in Venice in 1911 and fought in World War II, which ended up being the inspiration for a lot of his paintings. During his time in the war, he saw a lot of suffering, and this is where he got the idea for the series of Crying Children paintings. After the paintings were sold, there began to be reports of fires in all of the places where the paintings were held. While this could have just been a strange coincidence, the weirdest part is that the paintings always remained intact while everything else around them was burned. This quickly became the most talked about thing and was on the front of every newspaper, and the paintings quickly gained the nickname Diablo. It caused the paintings to end up being replicated and mass produced, but none of the replicas hold quite the same powers as the originals. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Goddess Statue. The Goddess of Death statue was also known as the Woman from the Lem. This artifact was made out of limestone and it was created somewhere around 3500 BC and was found in Cyprus in 1878. Over the years it has belonged to many different families who all have been ruined and dismantled by death. After the first six years of ownership, all seven members of the first family died. It then moved on to a second owner and after four years death began to come to him and his family as well. There was then a long period where it was unclaimed, but once the third family finally got a hold of it, several members of that family began to die as well. The third family ended up turning it over to the Royal Scottish Museum because it is of course an ancient relic, but legend goes that the museum curator who initially took care of it died within a year of receiving it. So maybe the curse lives on. In our number 5 spot today we have the goblet. This is an item that was found in a museum, but it was a museum of specifically haunted things so I feel like it still counts. This goblet is said to have been used for rituals of necromancy, which poses a few questions for me personally. What did they put in it and presumably drink out of it? Holy water? Wine? Blood? All the above? Who knows? Either way, here's the real kicker. This goblet was of course for sale on eBay because why not? And the seller was claiming that it has an amazing energy to it. Okay. What kind of energy? Well, they said that some find it strangely positive, but that many perceive it as negative and malignant. All right. Don't think I'll be bidding on that auction, to be perfectly honest. In our number 4 spot today, we have the Surrey Ghost Car. On December 11th, 2002, a call came into the Surrey Police Department. The caller reported that they had just seen a car lose control and run off the road and then presumably crash. It was, of course, an emergency call, but not necessarily anything out of the ordinary. That was until authorities got to the location and realized that they couldn't find any evidence of a crash. They kept searching and ended up finding a maroon colored car that was nose down in a ditch nearby. 
why, but this car was covered in so much undergrowth that it must have been here for months. This meant that somehow this crash went undetected for five months and worst of all, so did the body that lay nearby. Using dental records, they were able to identify the body as a man who had been wanted for robbery since July of that year. It is said that the sighting of the car leaving the road was a ghostly replay of the events that had taken place five months prior. In our number three spot today, we have doorknobs. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to ever hear about haunted doorknobs, but this might just be a thing that really does exist. These doorknobs were listed on eBay, and the seller explained that they were once the knobs seen on the doors at an asylum, which truly lands on the list of creepiest places in the world. Considering everything that is said to have gone on at places like these, it truly doesn't surprise me one bit. We're looking at you, lobotomies and other horrific mental health treatments of the past. These doorknobs must have quite literally opened the door to some terrifying things that I'm sure many of us would prefer to not even think about. According to the eBay listing, the asylum that they came from after it was abandoned is said to have had strange whispers, occurrences, and horrifying noises coming from it. This is all to say that maybe that trip to Home Depot is better than buying antique. Just this one time. In our number two spot today, we have the Nightmare Doll. Haunted dolls like Annabelle and even Robert get a lot of hype, but they certainly aren't the only dolls with stories of curses and hauntings behind them. This Nightmare Doll was listed for sale on eBay, and according to the seller, the doll is possessed by a Dibuk, which is a malicious demon or entity. The seller of the doll is actually someone who apparently specializes in selling these sort of paranormal items that no one wants anymore. The seller explained that the owner of the doll bought it at an antique shop, and while they did tell her about what the doll held, she didn't know what the word meant, so she took it anyways. Soon after purchasing it, she realized that anyone who came into contact with the doll was then plagued with terrifying nightmares and occurrences of these sort of shadow people. She only could handle this all for a couple of months before she handed the doll over for it to be sold and moved far, far away from her. In our number one spot today, we have the carving. This is a carving that was sold on eBay in 2013, which the sellers claimed had been in their family for over 60 years. It was originally found by the seller's grandparents in the attic of their home. This was back in the 1950s, and when it was found, the grandparents asked the original owners of the home where it had come from. They explained that it was a gift from a prisoner who was said to have carved it. The seller explained in their post that, quote, anyone who comes in contact with it seems to feel strange or creeped out by it. The statue mostly didn't cause too much harm. That was, until the seller tried to put it on display in their home. Once it was taken out of an old box and placed in a cabinet, strange occurrences began. They said that, quote, I began to experience the television turning off and on, lights coming on in rooms no one was in, the kids' toys coming on in the middle of the night in their room at 3 a.m. At the end of the day, despite the troubles this person had with the statue, they still ended up selling it for 85 bucks. Not a bad deal. Get rid of a demon and gain some cash for it. Mm -hmm.